this is Robbie here with a new program called Your New Normal. This program is designed to talk about issues and resources for those living with mental challenges. Please understand, I am not a professional, but I do hope to help others like me find resources and help find their new normal. This is Program 1 on Service Animals. I've been assigned a service animal. His name is JJ. He needs to be recertified every two years. He has a big luggy puppy head and he gets awes wherever he goes. I'd like to take you to a stressful ordeal. This is his test. We're outside in a Walmart parking lot waiting for the testing to begin. There's a whole group of people with a bunch of clipboards ready to scribble down on any mistake that my service animal JJ might make. It's a little unnerving. Every two years he needs to get recertified for his public access card. It's a little picture with me and him showing that he's an actual service dog and helps me to get on airplanes and buses without any trouble. The only part I'm a little nervous with is when I have to leave him in the middle of an aisle, go out of his sight, put him in a downstay, and they're going to have strangers come up and pet him and try to distract him to see if they can break him from his stay. I think he'll do okay. That's the only part, though, that I'm a little nervous about. Oh, here she comes. Oh, I'm so nervous. I don't know why. I know Walmart's so crowded and full of people. I think that's the uh, most tension <laughs> that I get. <laughs> We're waiting for everyone to gather. All the dogs and people are nervous. Some people are ambulatory, and some people have walkers, and some people have um, PTSD dogs. Half the dogs are golden retrievers, and half the dogs are labs. All of them are very handsome and well taken care of. My JJ seems to outshine the others, though. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Still testing JJ's being a champ. My heart's racing because I'm not good in crowds and stores. During the test, I wasn't able to keep you updated because I was dealing with panic attacks and startles, the things that one deals with with PTSD. JJ was a champ. Not only did he have to pass the test, but he also had to help me. <laughs> okay, I'm back, and I'm about to get the news of JJ's results of if he passed or not. So the director of Joy St. Peter is here, the director of Joy's the Living Assistance Dogs. And I'm going to ask her a few questions after we find out the results if JJ passed. Did JJ pass? Yes, JJ passed with flying colors. He did all his behaviors and tasks that he was to perform to prove that he's safe in public and you two are a certified working team. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, even JJ's wagging right now. Okay. Now, um, Joy didn't come up here just to give me the news of, of, of JJ's success. She also came up here to help me with my radio show here. And we're going to, I have a few questions for you if you don't mind. The first thing people usually ask me is, is that a comfort animal or is that a service animal? And JJ is actually a certified service animal. So, Joy, what's basically the difference between an emotional support animal and a service animal? Emotional support animal is one that is used strictly for comfort and helping keep the emotions stable. They are usually... They usually don't have public access. They usually are for the home use and for just small outings to keep the person comfortable. A service dog is a dog that has been trained to perform a task that's directly related to the person's disability. So they have extra training and expectations of behavior and task work. Oh, thank you. That clears it up. Um, 
A lot of times when I'm out and about with JJ, a lot of people come up and they see what a handsome dog he is, and they like to ask if they could pet him. Or some people actually come up and pet him without permission. And uh, it kind of gets difficult sometimes because I was talking to a friend who is disabled with a, on a chair, and my disability is not apparent. We kind of likened it to as if someone could walk up and say, can I play with the controls on your, on your chair, please? You know, and it's kind of the same thing there. Actually, JJ's a certified, JJ's an extension, and he helps me live a more, more normal life. So right now there's been a lot of hot topics about the, a tragedy happened last year on a streetcar here in Portland. A, a pit bull killed a Pomeranian. And it was really pretty tragic and pretty terrible for people to see that sort of thing happen on a train. And I guess what I was thinking is a lot of people will bring their animals on to public transportation and call them service animals. And then when this happens, it makes people that have actual service animals to get questioned more and because of these things that happens. Um, do you have anything you'd like to say about that? I must say that people bringing their pets on as service animals does definitely make it difficult on the legitimate people with service dogs because a lot of people cannot ask questions, enough questions to determine whether it is truly a service dog. However, usually service dogs are very well-mannered, well-behaved, and non-obtrusive um, helpmates, as we call them. And so the more fake service dogs that are out there, it jeopardizes the industry and it jeopardizes the legitimacy of the people that really do need them and their life depends on it. Yes, thank you. Yes, um, another question I have here. I know a lot of work goes into the of raising a service animal or bringing a service animal from puppy to, to a full-grown trained service animal. Usually, how long does it take to bring a um, till a service animal typically gets to graduation stage? It takes us two years from puppy to a graduate dog, and it involves socialization, training, tasks, behaviors, and a lot of being able to handle stresses. So it takes us two years from start to finish. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> There's do this all alone? <laughs> No, I have a lot of volunteers that volunteer to raise and train these dogs. They attend classes to learn how to train the dogs and what to expect, what are the rules and expectations, so that we always keep our dogs to be un unobtrusive and within the legal ramifications of a service dog. I'll bet there's a, quite a bit of cost involved with this sort of work. Um, how much does it usually cost to get a dog from puppy to trained? Well, outside of the normal maintenance care of a, of a regular dog, which are the shots, their daily maintenance, their warmings, their flea control, they have to pass their hips, eyes, and heart certifications so that we know that this is a healthy dog and, of course, their food. And so totally with just supplies, we're, we're looking at a couple of thousand and but for the whole working, if we had to pay for the training and everything, we would be looking at ten to fifteen thousand as the cost of training one of these dogs. How long has the Joys of Living Assistance Dogs been in existence? For eleven years, we got our nonprofit status in two thousand four, and going strong ever since. Very nice. So, wow, you must have probably placed quite a few dogs in two people's homes. Well, when you're considering it takes two years to train and place a dog, and not all dogs make it, that the first two years of the business, you don't place any dogs. So in the 11 years, we've placed about 30 dogs total. Yes, and considering that it's really strict, and for, for instance, JJ was the only one from his litter that actually made it. 
so there's a really high fail rate. A lot of people do ask me, what do you do with these dogs that fail? Well, we find them appropriate homes that they can live in forever and be happy. So if they don't make the program because they have uh, too high, uh, what we call a prey drive to chase the ball, chase the bird, chase the leaf, then we'll find them in a home that can accommodate that high energy level so that they can live a happy, healthy, long life. And so we place them as pets. That sounds very nice. Again, this is Robbie talking to Joy from the Joys of Living Assistance Dogs. I know before I got JJ, I was there was a long list of finding what I like to do, if I like to run, if I'm active, if I'm sort of personality I am, so that I'd be a good match with for JJ to be to match us up right, right? There's a it's very extensive. Yes. We need to know very extensively, what is your lifestyle, what your personality is like, what do you like to do so that we can match that same type of dog up with you so that the you and the dog match and that your lifestyle is conducive for the dog's personality. So we that is key to being a successful uh, team, working service dog team. You definitely need to get along. (laughs) Yes, and if you have a very strong-willed dog and you're not a real strong-willed person, the dog is just going to look at you and say, not today. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I could see. It'd be like a bad roommate. (laughs) Well, I I know I've been to graduations and I heard many stories about how these service animals have been real life changers. I know JJ's been a big life changer for me. Would you care to share a story of someone who, where a an service animal was placed and their story, you can change the names? Uh, what I would like to talk about is she was wheelchair bound and she was in her home alone and she fell forward into her chair and she was unable to right herself. So her dog helped support her head and... So she was able to direct her dog to pull the shawl off over her head so that she could continue to breathe. And then the dog came up under her head, um, supporting her head, which helped her breathe as well for almost four hours until somebody sent a welfare check because she wasn't answering her phone. And then the dog was able to go open the door and show the person that came to check on her where she was and was able to get help for her. So this was actually a, very, a life-saving act. That was truly amazing. I'd like to talk a little bit of my my disability. It's it's PTSD. JJ has been assigned to me as a PTSD dog. He gives me independence, so I don't have to rely on people all the time. He allows me to get out of the house. He helps me to navigate through people and crowds. When you walk with a dog, people open up a little bit space for you so they don't crowd you very much. He's also trained to put his body length behind my back if I'm standing in a line so that there will be about a space of two people behind me. And this allows me not to, so people won't be in my peripheral vision, which is a problem with those with PTSD. When I'm in a class, he puts his head on my foot And then when unannounced comes in the classroom that we do not know, he'll lift his head and I'll look in that direction. But until then, I can keep my direction on the the instructor instead of worrying about what's happening around me and kind of let that all go to JJ. So he is my, I put my trust in him so that I can concentrate or relax. At night, I have a really hard time getting to sleep. I have to medicate. And also, JJ will always put lie down on my legs until I fall asleep. And then when I wake up, he's not there. <laughs> so he allows me to be able to get it sleep, get to sleep at night, go through crowds. And also, if I freeze up with PTSD, he'll get me out of place, out and exit with... And all I have to do is just kind of look down at him and he'll get me out of there. So he's helped me in many situations, which I had some traumatic ones that I don't want to mention, but 
I don't want it to be triggering for other people, but he has, I can say, saved my life in a couple of situations. And Joy, do you, do you have anything to say about PTSD dogs? What I'd like to say about PTSD is it's not always opening a door or turning on a light, but it is enabling somebody to live their life to their fullest. They can get out to to the grocery store because of their dog. And it's so, such a subtle help that we don't see as an average person, but it's life-changing to them. And what they provide in the stability and the awareness that they can, they don't need to be on hyper-awareness like Robert was saying, but that is, it gives them the freedom and the independence that they once had. And I can't say enough about what these dogs do for these people because it's unseen. And so it's oftentimes overlooked. Yes, thank you. Okay, say I'm out there, Joy, and someone comes up to me and says, may I pet your dog? I I get this feeling that, you know, like this, pro- this person probably... Stay, this guy's day will be made if he can have time with my dog and I feel like sometimes I feel bad telling the person sorry he's actually a service dog and he can't you know there's always that dilemma and I always have that feeling but I know when I when I feel I really need him present for me it's easy for me to say maybe next time because right now I need him to be present for me. And that's really easy for me to say. But when a person comes and I'm feeling better, I kind of have a drama in my head, like, is it right for me to say no to this person? I would like to say to anybody that ever sees a working dog out there, just don't pet. Don't ask to pet. That is them. That dog is there for them, and that dog needs to be focused on them. And it doesn't really matter to us as individuals that are watching, whether they're having a good day or bad day. I've never had anybody come up to me and say, can I pet your child? That doesn't happen. It's private property. Dogs are not public property. They're there for them to serve a purpose. Their dogs need to be focused on them at all times. And I say that you have every right and say it with confidence. No, you cannot pet my dog. Yeah. That makes sense to me. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> I'd like to thank Joy St. Peter's with Joys of Living Assistance Dogs for coming in and taking some time out of her busy schedule. You can find more information of Joys of Living Assistance Dogs on joydogs.org. Again, that's joydogs.org. This is Robbie finishing up my first program on service dogs hoping you can find your new normal. If you like this video and want to support Northstar, please go to northstarclubhouse.org and click Donate.